<laughs> good morning, Stu. Uh, good morning. Um, can I make up that lab I missed last week? Of course. Thanks. How do I know when the speaker of gram hydroxide is cool enough to touch? Smell it. Smell it? Smell it. Smell it? Smell it. Smell it? Smell it. Smell it. Smell it. Guys, I have a lab I want you to do. Sure, Mr. VZ, whatever. Did you just say something? No. I just don't want to do this lab. Yeah, me neither. Uh, let's just get this over with. Ditrophilus biphosphate? Barium hydroxide? Do we even have this stuff? Check the <laughs> acid room. Put on your goggles and lab coats first. Why are you talking like that, man? Like what? Kinda hissy, like... Like what? Like you're a ghost. No, I didn't. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we should probably put on goggles so that in case of accident you don't lose your vision. And lab coats protect our ever-precious clothing. You never know what might happen. Where do we even begin looking? I don't think any of this stuff is where it should be. Do I have to put it back in order? How do we do that? Use the MSDS. Joe, did you say something? No. Well, someone said to use the MSDS. Okay. It's actually a pretty good idea. First, we just find the name of the chemical we're looking for. It's all alphabetical, like barium hydroxide. See? Here it tells us what section it goes under. Plus, it helps you know what chemicals shouldn't be mixed together. That should do it. Great! Grab the barium hydroxide and let's go. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create an 80% barium hydroxide solution in water. Then we'll take 5 milliliters and put it in a test tube and put it in a 250 milliliter hot water bath to bring it to a boil. Here you go. Thanks. Throw it all together and put it on the hot plate. You sure, man? First, check that the air around the hot plate is dry. Roll up your sleeves, remove any hanging jewelry, you point the test tube away from yourselves and others. Yeah, Joe, do all that stuff he just said. Stuff who said? Mr. Beasy. I didn't hear it. What all did you just do? Well, first I made sure it was dry here, because you should never operate with electrical equipment in a wet area. And then I took off all my bracelets. God forbid they catch on fire, I just love those bracelets. Then I made sure the test tube was pointing towards the wall, so that just in case the solution inside the wall is over, it wouldn't burn anyone. What if you've been using a gas burner? Well then you just have to make sure the gas wasn't built up in the air in the gas chamber before you use the striker. Don't worry, we'll just clean it up with some sodium hydroxide. Why? Why sodium hydroxide? Because, well, because you spill an acid, you always clean up an acid by neutralizing it with a base. If you spill a base, then you use an acid to neutralize it. If you use an acid on an acid, or a base on a base, it'd probably just even cause a worse reaction. Smell it. Oops, did I do that? No! Someone get the fire extinguisher. No, grab the fire blanket. Use the blanket if a person catches fire, because the fire extinguisher could react with the chemical and worsen the burn. If it were a chemical fire at the lab station, then you would use the extinguisher. Okay, did I ask? Man, that fire sure made me thirsty. Joe, you don't know where that beaker's been, or rather, what's in it. Good point. Hey, Mr. Beasy, how do I know if this beaker's in the to touch? Smell it. No! Don't smell it! No, don't smell it. Yeah, I didn't think so. If I smell it, it could cause nausea. Or even worse, brain damage. Just do it like this. Put your palm up so you don't burn it. Good idea! She told you.
Good thing we all got out of that lab yesterday alive. No kidding, there's some weird stuff going on. Like, I kept hearing this voice in my head. Yeah, me too. Was it like telling you how to be safe in a lab? Yeah. I bet it was the ghost of Stu. Who? Stu. Stu who? Stu was a student here ten years ago. Legend has it he came in early to do a lab with his chemistry teacher at the time, and no one saw him since. They say his chemistry teacher liked to lure students in and poison them. Who would believe in a ghost story like that?